All right, today we're going to be making kind of a major change to Liam, this water to air intercooler that we have been using for the last four years. NCC, no corners cut fabrication. Our buddy Justin Bloomer made this for us when we were first putting the truck together. I really wanted to use one of these because we knew we were gonna use this Holly manifold. And uh, I wanted to try to keep everything uh, in the back and didn't want a you know, big old water to air either in the cab or a big old air to air up front. And we thought we were going to need a bunch of cooling, so I wanted to get something quality. He didn't even make these at the time, so he whipped us up one uh, just for us. Thought about maybe uh, adding them to his lineup of, of intercoolers that he was going to make from here on out. But there just wasn't a whole lot of demand for it, and so he wanted to stick to you know the intercoolers that he specializes in. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen what he makes, they are really, really good quality uh, water to air, air to air. I mean, he does a bunch of fabrication stuff, but check out his website. I mean, he makes stuff for like thousands and thousands of horsepower, uh, setups. So really, really excellent, uh, fabricator. And they've got it to the point where they are knocking those things out really fast. So great service, great products. Um, but we are going to finally part ways with this. One of the things that we're trying to change up on Liam right now is to get some weight out of it and with the fact that we have this reservoir usually full I think that's probably about three gallons or so uh, at least we usually have about three gallons in it this is kind of the key to the whole system uh, a lot of guys don't use a proper size heat exchanger with those you know plenum water to air intercoolers and so I think that's why it's really done so well for us. Um, I've never really ever had to put ice in this. We've done it probably about six times or so. Out of the entire four years and the hundreds of hits that we've made on it, most of the time, this whole system just has water in it. Uh, nothing special, no ice packed in here or anything like that. It's really kind of working as uh, like a really efficient air to air. So most of the time, it's basically just running its cooling off of this. So it takes the water from the reservoir right here puts it through the intercooler to cool things down. The hot water comes back around the other side into this heat exchanger that's got these fans pulling from underneath the bed all the time. Cools it down before it goes back into the reservoir. Uh, yeah, it's just been working solid for us so far and haven't really had any issues with it. The problem is all the weight. I mean, so that whole pathway that I just described, that's all got water in it. And lines, you know, these big old lines, <laughs> look at all the rubber buildup from this. Ah, big old chunks of that thing. That's four years of rubber, probably six or seven sets of tires or something like that. So yeah, line's about this big. All the way up, that intercooler is usually full of water and then lines all the way back to here. This is full of water. This has at least three gallons in it. Just a lot of water, not to mention the weight of the actual uh, items themselves. So. Hoping we'll uh, cut a decent amount of weight. We are going to go to um, an air to air that we're gonna put up here, but it's gonna be relatively small. Um, something that's just going to, you know, provide us the flow that we need, because we don't wanna impede flow. We wanna be able to support, you know, probably around 900 horsepower. So something that I haven't really talked too much about yet is we're probably gonna slow this thing down uh, once the El Camino is up and running. So like, we're having a great time with it. This turbo is awesome. It's providing the power that we really wanted, um, you know, to take Liam to kind of the, the next level where we could be competitive out here. Um, well, at least somewhat competitive. But once the El Camino comes around, we're going to focus on that one because that one's going to have the safety that is required to go as fast as this thing is right now. And, you know, we would need to to get to actually being competitive with everybody. But we just don't have the cage and I'm not going to put the cage in here required for that. So we're going to tone this thing back down, and this is one of those steps uh, to get to that point. So we're going to have a, a smaller air-to-air, -air, probably going to have Nick from PTS Fab uh, work us one. And the turbo is probably going to go away. We're probably going to go back to an actual 75 millimeter. And uh, so the intercooler that we have on there should be plenty to flow about you know 900 horsepower, but... Uh, we're not really going to worry too much about cooling because remember we've done previous tests with this thing and we didn't have any water flowing through this and we did three back-to-back -back pulls and You know the motor was fine. So yeah looking forward to uh, seeing how much weight we can save 
truck usually sits around 3290 to 3300 so I'm really curious to see uh, how much weight we're actually going to lose so we'll weigh it again after we uh, take everything out and then get the new intercooler back in there we might actually uh, run it with no intercooler for a little while obviously um, a lot less boost just to be sure even though pretty positive it can run completely fine as it does right now with no intercooler at all so we'll see get this all uh undone and yeah take it to its new owner okay the bed looks so empty no more reservoir no more heat exchanger no more hoses and gallons and gallons of water shameless hughes plug get yourself hughes converter so yeah here's everything that we took out all of this stuff was basically filled with water so i'm hoping we lost a good amount of weight. And Delilah was a very good help. Weren't you? Yep. Figured out the problem? Yep. We got it all taken apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, so now this looks super weird because, I mean, we're used to the manifold being like five inches higher. So. Now the turbo definitely stands a lot higher, or well, a little bit more noticeable. And yeah, the engine looks a lot smaller, so maybe people won't be like, oh, you got enough motor in there? I'm not making fun of anybody who said that before, it's just I hear it a lot. Um, it's a 5.3, it's not a lot of motor. So that's why it ends up being funny. Just a lot of crap sticking out of the hood, that's all. So uh, yeah, obviously this pipe is gonna have to be, uh, we're gonna have to do a, either a new one or modify it just to be able to drive it around, which I'll probably do because I don't think Nick's gonna have um, time to do the new intercooler um, anytime soon. So uh, hell, we may even go racing with it uh, like that before we get an intercooler, we'll see. Uh, this little helper radiator in the front, I'll probably get rid of that. We were. We originally put that on there so that we could make uh, the long, long drives because uh, that radiator in the back really sucks. But I kind of want to put the intercooler right there. So um, I got to get the radiator in the back to be efficient enough, which means we'll probably have to get a new radiator. This one really is just not a good radiator at all as far as radiators go. Um, and it's top to bottom flow and the hoses are on the same side. So if I lose any little bit of water, like, so this reservoir is full right now. If I lose a slight bit of water, just enough for this top tank not to be completely full, which doesn't take much because it's not very thick, um, half the radiator doesn't get used because the water comes in here and it's got to fill this up to even use that side of the radiator. And if it doesn't have a whole lot of water in it, then most of the water just comes in here and then makes it to about here and then goes down and then returns. So we're only end up using half the radiator. I could feel the fan and like this fan goes cool and this fan is the only one that's hot. So this thing sucks. It needs to be a cross flow. Come in the top, uh, go across the top, go down to the bottom and then back across the bottom and then back into the engine. So. We'll get a nice radiator in there uh, and a good set of fans. I mean, who knows, now that I have all this room here, maybe I'll move the radiator back. I'm not too sure where this little dead zone back here stops. If we can get some airflow over here, even that radiator would work a little bit better. Um, so I don't know, we'll see. The other thing that we were thinking about is putting one of those uh, Naka ducts. Hey, 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 take it easy. Putting a duct in the bedside here. It's like one of those flush ducts. So like from the outside, it'll be completely flush, but then on the inside, it has a little hose uh, that would come out right here. And then we can just duct it to the front of this radiator. Cause I mean, that radiator sucks, but it would do fine as long as it could get more airflow. Cause even half of that radiator can cool us while we're driving along at like 2,700 RPM. So I don't know, we'll figure that out later. But uh, for now, we'll just keep that front helper radiator on there. Who knows, we'll see. Hell, I don't know, it may even make, uh, you know, better power than it did when we didn't have water flowing through it. Who knows? Yep, that's it for now, should be good. All right guys, we're back working on Liam and it feels weird. It feels weird not having the water to air intercooler on here. The manifold is so much lower. I mean, it's nice because I think we'll actually be able to put a hood on here now, but Man, I don't know, something about just not having that manifold, like that was one of the original parts on here, not a whole lot has really changed. Um, I mean, visibly, that's the biggest change that we've made. 
I gotta do a couple of things. Uh, we're gonna do a bunch of different testing on here. I don't know what order I'm gonna do them in, uh, but one of the things that we're gonna try is completely no intercooler. So Nick from PTS Fab is going to uh, make us an intercooler, um, but we gotta sort out some stuff. I'm gonna move the radiator in a different spot and get rid of this little helper radiator so that we can put a decent size intercooler down here. Um, but before we do that, I'm probably just gonna rig up this pipe to work uh, completely no intercooler. And we're gonna try some stuff with some different fuels. So one of the things that I've been wanting to try to do for a while is uh, a methanol mixture. So I know I posted up that picture and everybody was like assuming that we were going methanol with this. Um, we're not going to go straight methanol ever. I don't wanna to have to worry about the fuel system that's required for something like that. Um, I am going to beef up the fuel system a little bit because we're even short on fuel system um, as it is with the 85 for the power that we want to run. But uh, I'm going to try to use a mixture of methanol that can be done on a you know practical fuel system, not something that's like big mechanical fuel pump and giant injectors or multiple sets of injectors. I want it to be a single set, a single injector set system. I'm going to do a, a dual fuel pump setup because I was going to do that anyway. We have one uh, Magnafuel 750 in here and I have two other uh, fuel pumps of these. So I'm just going to add another one to this system and that should take care of uh, pump. We should have enough pump for what we want to do. So that'll obviously cover us for uh, any amount of E85 that we choose to use, which we're gonna do some testing. No intercooler on E85, like back to normal E85, not the mixed down E50 that we've been using these last couple of races, because um, we should have enough fuel system to run regular E85 now, uh, or with that pump. Then what we're gonna do is try to figure out how much methanol can we mix in with like just a standard 93 gas to uh, support enough cooling, like how much methanol do we have to use in order to uh, not have to run an intercooler, and but still have it be a low enough mixture of it to be done on a standard fuel system, because methanol, it takes a lot of methanol to uh, run properly. So I'm wondering how much is really necessary to get the cooling gains or the cooling benefit that you need to run without an intercooler. Because that's one of the main benefits of going to methanol is that people get rid of their intercooler and it runs so damn cool that uh, they don't have to. But that's on 100%. So, you know, what's that actual threshold? Because there's a threshold for ethanol um, where you stop yielding any kind of significant gains from using ethanol. So once it gets up to about 50%, which is what we were running, and there was no difference on my tune. I didn't pull any timing. Uh, intake air temps were always the same as everything we always ran on E85, and everything ran exactly the same. There not being a difference between 50% and 85%, as far as I can tell, in power or detonation resistance, um, all it did was mix it down so that we could run it on you know, what would be a smaller fuel system, essentially, a single pump around 1,150 horsepower. Um, you know, we mixed it down from 85% to 50% and we got more fuel capacity out of it. So it was a benefit with no um, sacrifice in detonation resistance or from what we could tell, um, combustion chamber cooling. So I'm hoping that the same sort of thing happens with the methanol. Do we have to run, like, can we do 50% methanol and still get the same uh, cooling attributes to where we don't have to run an intercooler and we gain something significant over running 50% ethanol or even 85% methanol. That's what I'm hoping. So the idea is to see if using methanol itself instead of ethanol um, will be better even though we're using about the same volume of fuel. So the, uh, the volume or the, the fuel system that's necessary for E85 at a certain power level, what is the methanol equivalent of that? Is it 40% methanol uh, or is it 50% methanol? And is it better to be at 40% methanol than it is 85% ethanol? So same exact fuel system, but different alcohol will we get a, you know, a gain or a benefit? So that's the goal of uh, upcoming videos. Right now, we just needed to get uh, back to the point where we can run the car again. So I gotta change that pipe. This will be the first time that we've even taken off 
this coupler. Ever since we built this thing over like four years ago, this coupler has not come off of this throttle body. It's, it never popped off from boost, never really had to come off. Even when we were taking uh, you know, stuff apart, if we took the manifold off, we just unhooked it from here. This thing all stayed in one piece and we just like swung the whole manifold over and set it on a stool here. Yeah, then we'll start the process of beef, beefing up the uh, pump setup. And I talked to Brad from Snake Eater Injector, uh, or Snake Eater Performance, and he said we should be able to run uh, a mixture of methanol with these injectors. So I was just worried about it hurting the injectors, but he said we should be fine. Obviously not leaving it in there forever. Uh, we probably will have to go through some sort of, you know, weekly thing where we drain out the methanol mixture and we run some gas through it. Or we leave that in the system, but we take the injectors out and we run some, you know, PB blaster through them or something. And then we slap them back in when we're getting ready for um, racing for the weekend. So I still want it to be a fuel that we run around and we're able to, you know, keep five to 10 gallons with us and are able to do like normal street driving, go drive somewhere, go racing, drive back home. Um, yeah, so hopefully we can get a mixture that doesn't consume like crazy and make it impractical to drive on the street. Um, some guys do it with 100% methanol, so we should be able to do it with a mixed down version of it for sure. We'll get to uh, changing out the pipe and then uh, yeah, go from there, I guess. So this goes to show you how long it's been since this thing's been off here. Uh, this didn't used to be this color. This all used to be black and uh, uh, this coupler's never come off, so it used to be this color, but sun has faded this over time. I actually prefer this color. I wish Holly would actually make it <laughs> like pre-faded into this color. It's pretty nice. But uh, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how little amount of debris has come out of either of these turbos. Because remember, I haven't had this off or cleaned it up or anything um, since the beginning. So that old uh, turbo that we had on there um, never really started putting any kind of like oil or anything through either. This is just four years of you know dirt but there's no like oil residue or anything like that so borg warner awesome job vs racing so far so good got that fit pretty easy um i just hacked a little bit of it off because it actually still had an okay angle but it was just the pipe was way up here because it was usually having to go up like five more inches um so yeah, it's a little, I mean, it's not lined up perfectly fine, which, you know, it wasn't before either. So in true, uh, I don't know, my sort of style, uh, that's going to work. It doesn't kink the coupler anywhere. It doesn't really tweak anything too hard. It's just really obvious that it doesn't fit like perfectly in here, but this clamp still has tons of uh, coupler or pipe to grab onto. And actually, um, because of the way this worked out, uh, I think there's a little lip now for that clamp to grab onto. So shouldn't have a problem popping off anyway, uh, cause we don't run a whole lot of boost, but yeah. So we'll just tighten this up. Actually need to take the whole thing off, uh, again and plug, uh, there's a hole in the back, um, that actually needs to be plugged up. So I got to put that sensor back in there and, uh, then we should be able to button it completely up. And then it's back to a condition where I could literally start it up, um, and run it as it sits. Uh, which I may do just to, uh, I mean, I haven't, haven't run it in a week, so I may just start it up and go drive it around a little bit, see how it feels not having the manifold in my field of view anymore. But, uh, yeah, so on to the next thing after we button that up, um, it's going to be the fuel system. So I got to head over to Nick's, uh, shop PTS fab. And uh, I'm going to sift through his fittings and see if he's got the fittings that we need to basically um, Y this off. Uh, so like a dash 10 to two dash 10s and then situate both of the pumps right there. And then uh, uh, two fuel filters and then one of each of these will go into each of those filters. So um, yeah, hopefully we can get that sorted out with what he has on hand so I don't have to order anything. But worst case scenario, I could probably see if Summit's got it and then on my way back home from Nick's, uh, just pick up the fittings that we need and get it done later. So I've added another pump. So now we have uh, two Magnafuel uh, 750s. And so basically all I did was instead of continue to have these fed by Dash 12, I really don't think that's necessary because we're not gonna be needing each of these uh, fuel pumps to flow you know, uh, 1200 horsepower worth of fuel. 
we really only needed a little bit more fuel capacity. Um, so adding this whole second pump just puts us way over what we actually need. Uh, but I had it laying around, so uh, might as well use it. This was actually the one that we were going to use on the El Camino, and we probably still will. We'll transfer it back over to the El Camino uh, in addition to another pump if we decide to not go mechanical, because we'll probably do the same exact setup that we're testing out here in the El Camino if we decide to go that route. Um, so basically, instead of uh, feeding this all with Dash 12, I just went ahead and had it stay uh, Dash 8 all the way into the pump. So each of these has a Dash 8 feed. And then each of these comes out dash 10. Now, if we find out that we're gonna run out of line, because these two go into a single dash 10, but I don't think um, I'm gonna be exceeding the flow uh, that the dash 10 is capable of doing, or that the dash eight feeds into the rails are able to do. Um, if we do, I mean, it's a pretty simple line to from here all the way to the back right here that we can upgrade to dash 12. I'll just have to get a Y that goes in two dash 10s into one dash 12 and then replace this whole line up to that Y, which I'll also have to replace. I mean, so it's probably another couple hundred dollars in freaking line and fittings um, if I have to do that, but I don't think we will. Uh, I think 100% of what our problem is, is we're just running out of pump. The pump ran out when it was expected to run out. It actually went a little bit further than we thought it would. So I'm not disappointed in the pump at all and I'm not worried too much about the lines from here on out, but we're kind of easing into, uh, you know, what will be, you know, maybe a future step. Uh, maybe in the future we upgrade that to dash 12 because we end up wanting to go 100% methanol in this. I doubt it because we don't really want this thing to be too much faster, but it's kind of my guinea pig in testing out different things. So we may end up wanting to uh, go to methanol at some point just for testing purposes not make like, you know, 2000 horsepower on methanol. You may just want to put methanol in there and see, you know, what it does with and without a cooling system or, you know, with and without an intercooler. Like we may just want to test some things that, that we can test at, you know, 800 horsepower or 700 horsepower, but on methanol because it'll require so much fuel to do 100% methanol. So I'll get that going and uh, yeah, hopefully we can prime the system, make sure we don't have any leaks and see how, it, see how it sounds with both of these things running at the same time. And I got a really, really snug fit on these. They are right next to each other and I put a like kind of a, a rubber uh, bushing in between them. So they are nice and sturdy and super tight together. So curious how loud they're gonna be. One was loud enough, I can only imagine two. fuel pressure we're getting. Let that sink up. Oh, yikes. Okay. Additional pump. Uh, now the base, which used to be 45, is now 70. Um, so we should probably turn that fuel pressure down a bit. And see, and now I'm hoping that we can turn down the fuel pressure, and this isn't an indication of those two pumps being too much for our uh, return line. Okay, so uh, I just primed it a couple of times. I was trying to fluctuate fuel pressure, and I couldn't really go below 69 psi. So it is what we're running into uh, where I was talking about the return line being too small, which isn't really gonna be a huge deal because we're gonna wanna up the fuel pressure when we start using the methanol anyway. So it looks like if I keep going down, it really doesn't go anything below 69 PSI. So then I started raising the setting, which by the way is incredibly hard to get to now because we don't have a big old intercooler raising this up. Um, so basically, I increased the setting on the regulator until it actually started yielding a higher number. So it was at basically 69, 70 PSI, no matter what I did. I was turning it down, it didn't go any lower. So then I started going back up 
and I kept going up until I saw 71 because then at that point I know that uh, the return line is not governing my pressure the regulator actually is because um, if I were to leave it at a low setting and be like well it's at 70 psi so I should be good it would actually screw me because once I start consuming some fuel from this rail it's going to expose the fact that my regulator setting is actually way low. Like if I had a big enough return line, my setting would probably yield like 40 PSI if I turned it way down. But because the return line is too small, it's showing a higher pressure because I'm not consuming any fuel. Those two pumps are shoving fuel through this system and it's getting backed up at the return line um, because I'm not consuming any of the fuel. So then when the car starts running and actually, uh, you know, putting some of that fuel into the motor, especially at the higher load ranges, it's gonna act like it has a 40 PSI uh, base. But at idle, it's gonna act like it has a 70 PSI base. So I wanna at least know that in power, it's not going to take me by surprise. So I'd rather just start with a 71 PSI uh, base fuel pressure. And who knows, with the methanol, we may end up going uh, higher. I don't really run a whole lot of boost. The max we're gonna really be running is probably, I don't know, 26, 27. We have a three bar map sensor in there, so we can't run any more than 28 no matter what. So uh, I think we're gonna be fine with around a 70 PSI base fuel pressure because that means our total fuel pressure is going to be probably still less than 100 PSI. And these pumps should be okay. They still do a decent amount of volume at 100 PSI. And the fact that we have two, we should have plenty of volume. So 